So the first thing that I wanna talk about is cooking. Now I do a lot of cooking videos on my channel and a lot of that is because I have found through the years that learning how to cook and cooking different types of dishes, it will always save you money out the door every single time. Now, obviously if you eat lobster every night, you probably are gonna have a little bit bigger bill. But overall, if you're someone who can put together a list at the grocery store, shop the sales, shop the ads, you know, try to keep your grocery bill under control and really plan your meals, you're gonna find it's a huge savings when you're not eating out or grabbing food on the go. Uh, learning how to cook is an amazing skill. And there's so many things you can do. You can read cookbooks, you can watch YouTube videos. There's every recipe under the sun now that's on the internet. So, you know, I find that by researching a lot of those things and uh, cooking, using my crock pot, my air fryer, all kinds of different things that it has saved me a ton of money. So the next thing I wanna talk about is the price of gasoline. Now, although prices are down just a hair right now, they're still over $4 a gallon in my area. So there's a couple things you can do. Um, the first is there's a lot of credit cards or um, what are they? Grocery stores that offer a gas rewards program. And one of the places that I thought was really great, if you're not a member of Sam's Club, if you have a Walmart Plus that you utilize throughout the year, that you could actually use that Walmart Plus to get gas at Sam's Club. But one of the things that I do, it's very simple. I have an app on my phone and it's called Gas Buddy. Now I think there's all kinds of apps out there now that spot the cheapest gas, but Gas, Bus, gas Buddy I find is just a really easy to use app. And when I need gas, I have a little credit card. It's all it's used for is gas. So I can go wherever I wanna go. And I kind of can keep track of all the gas that I'm spending by just looking every month at that particular credit card and just paying it off as soon as the bill comes. Now, I can save a lot of money with this gas buddy. And when I look at the prices, I mean, one gas station may have gas for $5.20 a gallon for regular gas. And I may look down five gas stations and find one for $4.50 a gallon. Now, I drive a small hybrid car, so I only fill up my car a couple times a month. It's not a huge savings, but 20 bucks a month, that's something I could be spending on something else or saving for something. So if you have a big car or an SUV or a gas guzzler, oh my gosh, Gas Buddy is a great option. And then the savings rewards programs that you might be able to find. Another thing that I do yearly, right around this time of the year, is that I look at any subscriptions that I have that I'm subscribing to, like a monthly fee for something, and I say, did I use it throughout the last year? If I didn't use it, I cancel it. If I didn't use it for three months, I cancel it. I don't let subscriptions sit on my bank account and take up money every single month. And there's lots of things we subscribe to thinking throughout the year that we might use it or not use it. And all of a sudden, 10, 12 months have gone by and we've spent $200 on this particular subscription. So now's a good time to look through your checking account, look through your subscriptions, and maybe decide if there's some that you can actually get rid of. If you find this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up or consider subscribing to my channel. On with the show. Now on to the grocery shopping. So I kind of touched on some of the ways you can save money by learning how to cook and, you know, doing some different uh, changes at the grocery store. But there have been a lot of studies done on ways to save money on groceries. And it's honestly, between eating out and grocery shopping, some people are paying as much as their house payment. It's just a huge bill. And with inflation have taken off the way that it did. I mean, groceries and eating out are at an all time high. So now it's more important than ever. If you can find the time to do it, meal plan for the week, 
um, just making out like, you know, the just the dinners alone, that is gonna save you a lot of headache at the grocery store. From your meal planning, make a list. And when you have your list together, go to the store, stick to the list. Don't go there hungry right before lunch or dinner. Have something to eat, go to the store, you know, stick to your list and shop cheap stores. I mean, there's a lot of stores out there that Aldi, for example, or, you know, some of the less expensive stores where you can find groceries at a discounted price. Shop generic. I mean, all these things are going to save you money. And um, the more that you can save money on food and the less that you can spend eating out, the better off you're going to be financially. Now, if you do want to eat out, there's also a couple options for that. I mean, there's all kinds of coupons that you can get in the mail. There's Groupons. You can buy some of those. Um, there's a book out. It's an entertainment book. Now, I haven't done that for a long time because I don't have kids at home. And um, my husband and I just don't go out to eat very much. But an entertainment book was something that we utilized a lot um, through the years. So you might want to look and see if they offer one in your area and what restaurants and fun activities are available through your entertainment book. The next item is budgeting. <laughs> budgeting is the key. If you have a working budget and you learn how to budget throughout the month, you are going to be able to be much further ahead than about 95% of the population. Nowadays, even through your bank, they usually offer some type of budgeting tools. There's all kinds of free budgeting forms you can get if you have, um, if you have Microsoft Office, a lot of the templates will offer free budgets. If you have uh, access to the internet and you can go to daveramsey.com, those are downloadable free budgets. There's just all kinds of tools out there. You could actually just type in free budget form and probably find tons of budgets. Um, so if you can get in the habit of doing a budget, maybe make a yearly budget, what you anticipate spending throughout the year, and then maybe a monthly or even a weekly budget, you're gonna see that your financial situation is gonna change immensely if you can stick to that budget. It's, I think where we get into problems is when we don't really anticipate like the things that we're gonna need throughout the year, so we don't budget for them, we don't save for them. I actually use an envelope system. I have two of them. I have one that my husband and I put together and we feed those envelopes every month as we get our paychecks. And those have sinking funds, which a sinking fund is nothing more than just a fund that you set up for something like an example would be insurance. You know that you're gonna have an insurance bill of let's say $100 a year on your car, I don't know. <clears throat> but you take that $100 and I divide it over 12 months and I put that money in every single month. So when that bill comes for my insurance, I take the money out, put it in my account, boom, off I send my payment and I haven't felt a thing. That's a great way to budget. The other thing that I do from that monthly budgeting of my envelopes is that I have just little envelopes that I keep in my purse. They're just little plastic envelopes. One is for groceries, one's for my blow money, one's for haircuts, and I keep them right there handy so that I don't use my debit card. Debit cards and credit cards are a no-no. Now there's times I do need to use a credit card and it's preferable, but I wanna make sure that I can pay it off at the end of the month. And if you can get used to budgeting, you're gonna see it's gonna definitely improve your, your savings. Now one of the savings challenges that I did this year was called a 52 week challenge. And as you can see, I'm kind of working my way through the budgeting. I have a few more weeks left till the end of the year. And at the end of this, I'll have $1,378. Now from that, from my son's birthday, we actually just recently did a trip to Disneyland and California Adventure. 
And I also bought the family uh, Seasons Passes for Knots. They were on sale. My family, I don't know, my kids love amusement parks. So we did that all within this money. So um, I did actually put that on a credit card knowing that it would take another month. I'm going to go ahead and pay it. I have this little savings can that I've been putting everything together in. And I have exactly enough money to pay for those trips. Now next year, I'm going to do something even more fun. I'm going to do the savings challenge backwards. So the way this challenge works is that every single week you put money in for the week that you are in the year. So week one in January is going to be a dollar. Week 28 in, Je in where, whenever that is, June, is going to be $28. So by the end of the year, you're putting in your last check is, or your last dollar amount is $52. So this year, January 1st, I'm going to start off with $1 for the first week. And then I'm also going to add $52 for the last week of the year. So I'm going to do my savings challenge backwards till I get to the end because I really want to have a little bit more saved up for fun stuff at the end of the year. So I'm hoping that I'll have close to maybe 4,000. No, it won't be that much. It'll be about $3,200. So that's just a little thing that I do to save some extra money and uh, not have to take money out of savings and not have to put anything on, you know, a card that I've got to pay over time or something like that. So you may consider some savings challenges. Um, I'm going to be doing a video probably the first or second week in January or maybe even the end of December on setting up my savings challenges for 2024. So maybe we could do it together. Look for that future video. So this is going to sound like a funny thing to bring up, but... Coffee, I think, has become such a prevalent and expensive item that a lot of people feel like they can't live without their coffees throughout the day or throughout the week. And all of a sudden, they've spent $250 a month on, you know, various coffee companies like Starbucks or Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf or what have you. And some of those can be very, very expensive. So if you're one of those people that loves having a good, delicious coffee and you, you know, really enjoy your Starbucks or, you know, your coffee place, your coffee uh, place that you go to to enjoy it, maybe consider investing in a fancier coffee machine. Instead of just a regular coffee pot, maybe consider buying an espresso or maybe some type of espresso machine or something like that. Even if it's a little bit more expensive than a normal coffee pot, if you're spending that kind of money going out and buying coffee, you're going to save in the long run. Even if you buy your Starbucks coffee at the grocery store, you're still going to save money. So maybe consider, um, you know, that is an option. Another thing a lot of coffee companies are doing a lot of companies like Panera or Starbucks, they're offering a coffee club. Now those don't usually include the more fancy coffees, but if you like a good iced coffee or something, you can usually get something like that at a discounted price. So you might wanna check around and see if your favorite coffee place offers that type of thing. But, um, you know, working on something like that, I mean, that could be a significant savings throughout the month is just figuring out another way to make your favorite coffee at a discount. Now, there's so many things that I can talk to you about today about ways that save money, but I think the most important things are to budget, to stay within the money that you make, make sure that you always have time to, or you always set aside the the money every month to save, pay yourself first, and consider maybe vacations that you can enjoy around wherever it is you live. If there's fun activities you can do, if you like nature, if you can go on hikes, if you, you know, like natural parks and some of those are around wherever you live, I mean, that can be a great source of fun. So I hope some of these frugal tips have helped you. Um, we've got 
Christmas coming at the end of the year, I actually have a Christmas envelope. If you don't have one, you know what? Starting January 1, this may not help you too much for this time of the year, but starting January 1, let's set up a savings challenge just to set up envelopes throughout the year. And I'm going to show you how I do it, and maybe it's something you'll want to try too. Um, it has taken all the stress out of Christmas shopping for me. This time of the year, I have my Christmas money to buy presents. And usually I have some left over, so I enjoy a few things that I can spend money on the family or get a little something for my husband and I. So enjoy this process. I hope that this has been helpful to you. And uh, I hope that we can... Uh, you know, get through the holidays comfortably. Just remember, you don't have to spend $2,500 on a credit card and pay for it throughout the rest of the year. You know, Black Friday's coming up. I know we just hit Amazon Prime, but if you can figure out a way to maybe budget an amount for each person that you're buying for, including the kids on your list, you don't have to spend $5,000 on each kid in the family to have a really great Christmas. So um, thanks again for watching. I hope this helps and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.